Ing. Chapter 6. Cochin Kangaroos. Cochin Airport, Rahel's new knickers were polka dotted and still crisp. The rehearsals had been rehearsed. It was the day of the play. The culmination of the What Will Sophie Mole Think? Week. In the morning at the Hotel Sea Queen, Amu, who had dreamed at night of dolphins, and a deep blue, helped Rahel to put on her frothy airport frock. It was one of those baffling aberrations in Amma's taste, a cloud of stiff yellow lace with tiny silver sequins, and a bow on each shoulder. The frilled skirt was underpinned with buckram to make it flare. Rahel worried that it didn't really go with her sunglasses. Amma held out the crisp matching knickers for her. Rahel, with her hands on Amma's shoulders, climbed into her new knickers, left leg, right leg, and gave Amma a kiss on each dimple, left cheek, right cheek. The elastic snapped softly against her stomach. Thank you, Amu, Rahel said. Thank you? Amma said. For my new frock and knickers, Rahel said. Amma smiled. You're welcome, my sweetheart, she said, but sadly. You're welcome, my sweetheart. The moth on Rahel's heart lifted a downy leg. Then put it back. Its little leg was cold. A. Little less her mother loved her. The sea queen room smelled of eggs and filter coffee. On the way to the car, Esther carried the eagle vacuum flask with the tap water. Rahel carried the eagle vacuum flask with the boiled water. Eagle vacuum flasks had vacuum eagles on them, with their wings spread, and a globe in their talons. Vacuum eagles, the twins believed, watched the world all day, and flew around their flasks all night. As silently as owls they flew, with the moon on their wings. Esther was wearing a long-sleeved red shirt, with a pointed collar, and black drainpipe trousers. His puff looked crisp and surprised. Like well-whipped egg white. Esther, with some basis, it must be admitted, said that Rahel looked stupid in her airport frock. Rahel slapped him, and he slapped her back. They weren't speaking to each other at the airport. Chaco, who usually wore a mundu, was wearing a funny tight suit and a shining smile. Emma straightened his tie, which was odd and sideways. It had had its breakfast and was satisfied. Emma said, what's happened suddenly to our man of the masses? But she said it with her dimples, because Chaco was so burst. So very happy. Chaco didn't slap her. So she didn't slap him back. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 66 from the Sea Queen florist Chaco had bought two red roses, which he held carefully. Fatly. Fondly. The airport shop, run by the Kerala Tourism Development Corporation, was crammed with Air India Maharajas, small medium large, sandalwood elephants, small medium large, and papier matcha masks of Kathakali dancers, small medium large. The smell of cloying sandalwood and terry cotton armpits, small medium large, hung in the air. In the arrivals lounge, there were four life-sized cement kangaroos with cement pouches that said use me. In their pouches, instead of cement joeys, they had cigarette stubs, used matchsticks, bottle caps, peanut shells, crumpled paper cups and cockroaches. Red beetle spit stains spattered their kangaroo stomachs like fresh wounds. Red-mouthed smiles the airport kangaroos had. And pink-edged ears. They looked as though if you pressed them they might say mama in empty battery voices. When Sophie Mole's plane appeared in the sky-blue Bombay coach and sky the crowd pushed against the iron railing to see more of everything. The arrival's lounge was a press of love and eagerness, because the Bombay coach in flight was the flight that all the foreign returnees came home on. Their families had come to meet them. From all over Kerala. On long bus journeys. From Runni, from Komalai, from Bishinjum, from Uzavur. Some of them had camped at the airport overnight and had brought their food with them. And tapioca chips and chakavalekatha for the way back. They were all there, the Defamumas, the Cantankerous, Arthritic Apopans, the Pining Wives, Scheming Uncles, Children with the Runs. The Fianchis to be reassessed. The teacher's husband still waiting for his Saudi visa. The teacher's husband's sisters waiting for their dowries. The wirebender's pregnant wife. Mostly sweeper class, baby Kochama said grimly, and looked away while a mother, not wanting to give up her good place near the railing, aimed her distracted baby's penis into an empty bottle, while he smiled and waved at the people around him. SSSSS, his mother hissed. First persuasively, then savagely. But her baby thought he was the Pope. He smiled and waved and smiled and waved. With his penis in a bottle. Don't forget that you are ambassadors of India, baby Kochama told Rahel and Esther. You're going to form their first impression of your country. Two egg twin ambassadors. Their Excellency's Ambassador E. Lvis. Pelvis, and Ambassador S. Tick. Insect. In her stiff lace dress and her fountain in a love in Tokyo, Rahel looked like an airport fairy with appalling taste. She was hemmed in by humid hips, as she would be once again, at a funeral in a yellow church, and grim eagerness. She had her grandfather's moth on her heart. She turned away from the screaming steel bird in the sky-blue sky that had her cousin in it, 
and what she saw was this, red-mouthed Roos with ruby smiles moved cemently across the airport floor. Heel and toe heel and toe. Long flat feet airport garbage in their baby bins. The smallest one stretched its neck like people in English films who loosen their ties after office. The middle one rummaged in her pouch for a long cigarette stub to smoke. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 67 She found an old cashew nut in a dim plastic bag. She gnawed it with her front teeth like a rodent. The large one wobbled the standing up sign that said Kerala Tourism Development Corporation welcomes you with a Kothakali dancer doing a namaste. Another sign, unwobbled by a kangaroo, said, Emical WOTCBT is sip est sissy fo aid nigh urgently, Ambassador Rahel burrowed through the press of people to her brother and co-ambassador. S the look. Look s the look. Ambassador s the wouldn't. Didn't want to. He watched the bumpy landing with his tap water eagle flask slung around him, and a bottomless bottomful feeling, the orange drink lemon drink man knew where to find him. In the factory in Imenum. On the banks of the Menacle. Amma watched with her handbag. Chaka with his roses. Baby Kochama with her sticking out neck mole. Then the Bombay Cochin people came out. From the cool air into the hot air. Crumpled people uncrumpled on their way to the arrivals lounge. And there they were, the foreign returnees, in wash and wear suits and rainbow sunglasses. With an end to grinding poverty in their aristocrat suitcases. With cement roofs for their thatched houses and geysers for their parents' bathrooms. With sewage systems and septic tanks. Maxis and high heels. Puff sleeves and lipstick. Mixie grinders and automatic flashes for their cameras. With keys to count and cupboards to lock. With a hunger for kappa and mean vevichathu that they hadn't eaten for so long. With love and a lick of shame that their families who had come to meet them were so, so. Gawkish. Look at the way they dressed. Surely they had more suitable airport wear. Why did Malayalis have such awful teeth? And the airport itself. More like the local bus depot. The birds hid on the building. Oh. The spit stains on the kangaroos. Oh ho. Going to the dogs India is. When long bus journeys and overnight stays at the airport were met by love and a lick of shame, small cracks appeared, which would grow and grow, and before they knew it, the foreign returnees would be trapped outside the history house and have their dreams redreamed. Then, there, among the wash and wear suits and shiny suitcases, Sophie Mole. Thimble drinker. Coffin cartwheeler. She walked down the runway, the smell of London in her hair. Yellow bottoms of bells flapped backwards around her ankles. Long hair floated out from under her straw hat. One hand in her mother's. The other swinging like a soldier's, left 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 right left. There was a girl, tall and thin and fair. Her hair, her hair was the delicate color of gin and anger. Left left right, there was a girl, Margaret Kochama told her to stop it. So she stopped it. Emma said, can you see her, Rahel? She turned around to find her crisp knickered daughter communing with cement. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 68 Marsupials She went and fetched her, scoldingly. Chaco said he couldn't take Rahel on his shoulders because he was already carrying something. Two roses red. Fatly. Fondly. When Sophie Mole walked into the arrival's lounge, Rahel, overcome by excitement and resentment, pinched Esta hard. His skin between her nails. Esta gave her a Chinese bangle, twisting the skin on her wrist different ways with each of his hands. Her skin became a welt and hurt. When she licked it, it tasted of salt. The spit on her wrist was cool and comfortable. Emma never noticed. Across the tall iron railing that separated meters from the Met and greeters from the Gret, Chaco, beaming, bursting through his suit and sideways tie, bowed to his new daughter and ex-wife. In his mind, Esther said bow. Hello, ladies, Chaco said in his reading aloud voice, last night's voice in which he said, love. Madness. Hope. Infinite joy. And how was your journey? And the air was full of thoughts and things to say. But at times like these, only the small things are ever said. The big things lurk unsaid inside. Say hello and how'd you do? Margaret Kochama said to Sophie Mole. Hello and how'd you do? Sophie Mole said through the iron railing, to everyone in particular. One for you and one for you, Chaco said with his roses. And thank you? Margaret Kochama said to Sophie Mole. And thank you? Sophie Mole said to Chaco, mimicking her mother's question mark. Margaret Kochama shook her a little for her impertinence. You're welcome, Chaco said. Now let me introduce everybody. Then, more for the benefit of onlookers and eavesdroppers, because Margaret Kochama needed no introduction really, my wife, Margaret. Margaret Kochama smiled and wagged her rose at him. Ex-wife, Chaco. Her lips. Formed the words, though her voice never spoke them. Anybody could see that Chaco was a proud and happy man to have had a wife like Margaret. 
white. In a flowered, printed frock with legs underneath. And brown back freckles on her back. And arm freckles on her arms. But around her, the air was sad, somehow. And behind the smile in her eyes, there was a fresh, shining blue. Because of a calamitous car crash. Because of a Joe-shaped hole in the universe. Hello all, she said. I feel I've known you for years. Hello wall. My daughter, Sophie, Chaco said, and laughed a small, nervous laugh that was worried, in case Margaret Kochama said ex daughter. But she didn't. It was an easy to understand laugh. Not like the orange drink lemon drink man's laugh that Esther hadn't understood. Ho, oh, Sophie. Mole said. She was taller than Esther. And bigger. Her eyes were blue gray blue. Her pale skin was. The color of beach sand. But her hatted hair was beautiful, deep red brown. And yes, oh. Yes, she had Papachi's nose waiting inside hers. An imperial entomologist's nose within a nose. A moth lover's nose. She carried her made in England go-go bag that she loved. Amo, my sister, Chaco said. Amma said a grown-up's hello to Margaret Kochama, and a children's hello to Sophie Mole Rahel watched Hawkeye to try and gauge how much Amma loved Sophie Mole, but couldn't. Laughter rambled through the arrival's lounge like a sudden breeze. Adur Basie, the most popular, best-loved comedian in Malayalam cinema, had just arrived, Bombay. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 69 Cochin Burdened with a number of small unmanageable packages and unabashed public adulation, he felt obliged to perform. He kept dropping his packages and saying, Andy Diavoyne. Lee sat an angle. Esther laughed a high, delighted laugh. Amma look. A doer basis dropping his things. Esther said. He can't even carry his things. He's doing it deliberately, baby Kochama said in a strange new British accent. Just ignore him. He's a film actor, she explained to Margaret Kochama and Sophie Mole, making a doer basis sound like a mactor who did occasionally fill. Just trying to attract attention, Baby Kochama said, and resolutely refused to have her attention attracted. But Baby Kochama was wrong. Adur Basi wasn't trying to attract attention. He was only trying to deserve the attention that he had already attracted. My aunt, Baby, Chaco said. Sophie Mole was puzzled. She regarded Baby Kochama with a beady-eyed interest. She knew of cow babies and dog babies. Bear babies, yes. She would soon point out to Rahel about Baby. But Aunt Babies confounded her. Baby Kochama said, Hello, Margaret, and hello, Sophie Mole. She said Sophie Mole was so beautiful that she reminded her of a wood sprite. Of Ariel. Do you know who Ariel was? Baby Kochama asked Sophie Mole Ariel in the Tempest. Sophie Mole said she didn't. Where the bee sucks their suck eye? Baby Kochama said. Sophie Mole said she didn't. In a cowslip's bell I lie? Sophie Mole said she didn't. Shakespeare's The Tempest? Baby Kochama persisted. All this was of course primarily to announce her credentials to Margaret Kochama. To set herself apart from the sweeper class. She's trying to boast, Ambassador E. Pelvis whispered in Ambassador S. Inset's ear. Ambassador Rahel's giggle escaped in a blue-green bubble, the color of a jackfruit fly, and burst in the hot airport air. Pfft. Was the sound it made. Baby Kochama saw it, and knew that it was Esther who had started it. And now for the VIPs, Chaco said, still using his reading aloud voice. My nephew, Est Happen. Elvis Presley, baby Kochama said for revenge. I'm afraid we're a little behind the times here. Everyone looked at Esther and laughed. From the soles of Ambassador Esther's beige and pointy shoes an angry feeling rose and stopped around his heart how'd you do, Est Happen? Margaret Kochama said. Finna thank ya, Esther's voice was sullen. Esther, Amma said affectionately, when someone says how'd you do? You're supposed to say how'd you do? Back. Not fine, thank you. Come on, say how do you do? Ambassador Esther looked at Amo. Go on, Amma said to Esther. How do you do? Esther's sleepy eyes were stubborn. In Malayalam Amma said, did you hear what I said? Ambassador Esther felt blue gray blue eyes on him, and an imperial entomologist's nose. He didn't have a how do you do? In him. Est happen. Amma said. And an angry feeling rose in her and stopped around her. Hard a far more angry than necessary feeling. She felt somehow humiliated by this. Public revolt in her area of jurisdiction. She had wanted a smooth performance. A prize for her children in the Indo-British Behavior Competition. Chaco said to Amu in Malayalam, please. Later. Not now. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 70. And Amu's angry eyes on Esther said, all right. Later. And later became a horrible, menacing, goosebumpy word. Lay. Tur. 
like a deep-sounding bell in a mossy well, shivery and furred, like moth's feet. The play had gone bad, like pickle in the monsoon. And my niece, Chaco said, where's Rahel? He looked around and couldn't find her. Ambassador Rahel, unable to cope with seesawing changes in her life, had reveled herself like a sausage into the dirty airport curtain and wouldn't unravel. A sausage with bata sandals. Just ignore her, Amma said. She's just trying to attract attention. Amma too was wrong. Rahel was trying to not attract the attention that she deserved. Hello, Rahel, Margaret Kochama said to the dirty airport curtain. How do you do? The dirty curtain replied in a mumble. Aren't you going to come out and say hello? Margaret Kochama said in a kind schoolteacher voice. Like Miss Mittens before she saw Satan in their eyes. Ambassador Rahel wouldn't come out of the curtain because she couldn't she couldn't because she couldn't because everything was wrong. And soon there would be a later for both her and Esther. Full of furred moths and icy butterflies. And deep sounding bells. And moss. And an owl. The dirty airport curtain was a great comfort and a darkness and a shield. Just ignore her, Amma said and smiled tightly. Rahel's mind was full of millstones with blue-gray blue eyes. Amma loved her even less now. And it had come down to brass tacks with Chaco. Here comes the baggage, Chaco said brightly. Glad to get away. Come, Sofikins, let's get your bags. Sofikins. Estha watched as they walked along the railing, pulling through the crowds that moved aside, intimidated by Chaco's suit and sideways tie and his generally bursty demeanor. Because of the size of his stomach, Chaco carried himself in a way that made him appear to be walking uphill all the time. Negotiating optimistically the steep, slippery slopes of life. He walked on this side of the railing, Margaret Kochama, and Sophie Mole on that. Sofikins. The sitting man with the cap and epaulets, also intimidated by Chaco's suit and sideways tie, allowed him into the baggage claim section. When there was no railing left between them, Chaco kissed Margaret Kochama, and then picked Sophie Mole up. The last time I did this I got a wet shirt for my pains, Chaco said and laughed. He hugged her and hugged her and hugged her. He kissed her blue-gray blue eyes, her entomologist's nose, her hatted red-brown hair. Then Sophie Mole said to Chaco, um, excuse me? Do you think you could put me down now? I'm um, not really used to being carried. So Chaco put her down. Ambassador Estha saw, with stubborn eyes, that Chaco's suit was suddenly looser, less bursty. And while Chaco got the bags, at the dirty curtained window later became now. Estha saw how baby Kochama's neck mole licked its chops and throbbed with delicious anticipation. Dirt boom, dirt boom. It changed color like a chameleon. Dirt green, dirt blue black, dermastard yellow. Twins for tea. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 71. It would be a. All right, Amma said. That's enough. Both of you. Come out of there, Rahel. Inside the curtain, Rahel closed her eyes and thought of the green river, of the quiet deep swimming fish, and the gossamer wings of the dragonflies that could see behind them, in the sun. She thought of her luckiest fishing rod that Velutha had made for her. Yellow bamboo with a float that dipped every time a foolish fish inquired. She thought of Velutha and wished she was with him. Then Estha unraveled her. The cement kangaroos were watching. Amma looked at them. The air was quiet except for the sound of baby Kochama's throbbing neck mole. So, Amma said. And it was really a question. So? And it hadn't an answer. Ambassador Estha looked down and saw that his shoes, from where the angry feelings rose, were beige and pointy. Ambassador Rahel looked down and saw that in her bata sandals her toes were trying to disconnect themselves. Twitching to join. Someone else's feet. And that she couldn't stop them. Soon she'd be without toes and have a bandage like the leper at the level crossing. If you ever, Amma said, and I mean this, ever, ever again disobey me in public, I will see to it that you are sent away to somewhere where you will jolly well learn to behave. Is that clear? When Amma was really angry she said jolly well. Jolly well was a deeply well with larfing dead people in it. Is. That. Clear? Amma said again. Frightened eyes and a fountain looked back at Amma. Sleepy eyes and a surprised puff looked back at Amma. Two heads nodded three times. Yes. It's. Clear. But baby Kochama was dissatisfied with the fizzling out of a situation that had been so full of potential. She tossed her head. As if, she said. As if. Amma turned to her, and the turn of her head was a question. It's useless, baby Kochama said. They're sly. They're uncouth, deceitful. They're growing wild. You can't manage them. Amma turned back to Estha and Rahel, and her eyes were blurred jewels. Everybody says that children need a baba. And I say no. Not my children. Do you know why? Two heads nodded. 
Why? Tell me, Amma said. And not together, but almost, Est happen and Rahel said, because you are Ammo and our Baba, and you love us double. More than double, Amma said. So remember what I told you. People's feelings are. Precious. And when you disobey me in public, everybody gets the wrong impression. What ambassadors and a half you've been? Baby Kochama said. Ambassador E. Pelvis and Ambassador S. Insect hung their heads. And the other thing, Rahel, Amma said, I think it's high time that you learned the difference between clean and dirty. Especially in this country. Ambassador Rahel looked down. Your dress is was clean, Amma said. That curtain is dirty. Those kangaroos are dirty. Your hands are dirty. Rahel was frightened by the way Amma said clean and dirty so loudly. As though she was talking to a deaf person. Now, I want you to go and say hello properly, Amma said. Are you going to do that or not? The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 72 Two heads nodded twice. Ambassador Estha and Ambassador Rahel walked towards Sophie Mole. Where do you think people are sent to jolly well behave? Estha asked Rahel in a whisper. To the government, Rahel whispered back because she knew. How do you do? Estha said to Sophie Mole loud enough for Amma to hear. Just like a lad do one PS2, Sophie Mole whispered to Estha. She had learned this in school from a Pakistani classmate. Estha looked at Amo. Amma's look said never mind her as long as you've done the right thing. On their way across the airport car park, hot weather crept into their clothes and dampened crisp knickers. The children lagged behind, weaving through parked cars and taxis. Does yours hit you? Sophie Mole asked. Rahel and Estha, unsure of the politics of this, said nothing. Mine does, Sophie Mole said invitingly. Mine even slaps. Ours doesn't, Estha said loyally. Lucky, Sophie Mole said. Lucky rich boy with pocket money. And a grandmother's factory to inherit. No worries. They walked past the Class 3 Airport Workers Union Token One Day Hunger Strike. And past the people watching the Class 3 Airport Workers Union Token One Day Hunger Strike. And past the people watching the people watching the people. A small tin sign on a big banyan tree said for VD. Sex complaints contact Dr. OK Joy. Who do you love most in the world? Change into what? Sophie Mole asked. Into a male chauvinist pig, Rahel said. Very unlikely, Estha said. Anyway, after Mamachi, Velutha, and then, who's Velutha? Sophie Mole wanted to know. A man we love, Rahel said. And after Velutha, you, Rahel said me? What do you love me for? Sophie Mole said. Because we're first cousins. So I have to, Rahel said piously. But you don't even know me, Sophie Mole said. <coughs> and anyway, I don't love you. But you will, when you come to know me, Rahel said confidently. I doubt it, Estha said. The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 73 Why not? Sophie Mole said. Because, Estha said. And anyway she's most probably going to be a dwarf. As though loving a dwarf was completely out of the question. I'm not, Rahel said. You are, Estha said. I'm not you are. I'm not. You are. We're twins, Estha explained to Sophie Mole, and just see how much shorter she is. Rahel obligingly took a deep breath, threw her chest out, and stood back to back with Estha in the airport car park, for Sophie Mole to see just how much shorter she was. Maybe you'll be a midget, Sophie Mole suggested. That's taller than a dwarf and shorter than a human being. The silence was unsure of this compromise. In the doorway of the arrival's lounge, a shadowy, red-mouthed roux-shaped silhouette waved a cemently paw only at Rahel. Cement kisses whirred through the air like small helicopters. Do you know how to sashay? Sophie Mole wanted to know. No. We don't sashay in India, Ambassador Estha said. Well, in England we do, Sophie Mole said. All the models do. On television. Look it's easy. And the three of them, led by Sophie Mole, sashayed across the airport car park, swaying like fashion models, eagle flasks, and made in England go-go bags bumping around their hips. Damp dwarfs walking tall. Shadows followed them. Silver jets in a blue church sky, like moths in a beam of light. The sky blue Plymouth with tail fins had a smile for Sophie Mole. A chrome bumpered shark smile. A paradise pickles car smile. When she saw the carrier with the painted pickle bottles and the list of paradise products, Margaret Kochama said, Oh dear. I feel as though I'm in an advertisement. She said, Oh dear. A lot. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. I didn't know you did pineapple slices, she said. Sophie loves pineapple, don't you, Sof? Sometimes, Sof said. And sometimes not. 
Margaret Kochama climbed into the advertisement with her brown back freckles and her arm freckles and her flowered dress with legs underneath. Sophie Mole sat in front between Chaco and Margaret Kochama, just her hat peeping over the car seat. Because she was their daughter. Rahel and Espa sat at the back. The luggage was in the boot. Boot was a lovely word. Sturdy was a terrible word. Near at Timnur they passed a dead temple elephant, electrocuted by a high-tension wire that had fallen on the road. An engineer from the Etimnur municipality was supervising the disposal of the carcass. They had to be careful because the decision would serve as precedent for all future government pachyderm carcass disposals. Not a matter to be treated lightly. There was a fire engine and some confused firemen. The municipal officer had a file and was shouting a lot. There was a joy ice cream cart and a man selling peanuts in narrow cones of paper cleverly designed to hold not more than eight or nine nuts. Sophie Mole said, look, a dead elephant. Chaco stopped to ask whether it was by any chance Coach Atomban, Little Tusker, the Imenum Temple Elephant who came to the Imenum House once a month for a The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy 74 Coconut They said it wasn't relieved that it was a stranger, and not an elephant they knew, they drove on. Tang God, Estha said. Thank God, Estha, baby Kochama corrected him. On the way, Sophie Mole learned to recognize the first whiff of the approaching stench of unprocessed rubber, and to clamp her nostrils shut until long after the truck carrying it had driven past. Baby Kochama suggested a car song. Estha and Rahel had to sing in English in obedient voices. Breezily. As though they hadn't been made to rehearse it all week long. Ambassador E. Pelvis and Ambassador S. Insect. Rejoice in the lowered or ways and again I say rejoice. Their prior NUNC Aishan was perfect. The Plymouth rushed through the green midday heat, promoting pickles on its roof, and the sky-blue sky in its tail fins. Just outside Imenum they drove into a cabbage-green butterfly, or perhaps it drove into them.